Okay guys, so I actually forgot the SD card for this at my house after I drove all the way out here in not so perfect conditions, but that doesn't matter because today I'm going to be switching up and using my phone or trying to use my phone here, hopefully it works, to talk to you guys about some of the dangers of an Alaskan winter and how to survive an Alaskan winter. And I'm going to mix this one up because I'm going to shoot it entirely on my phone because I don't have an SD card for this little camera. So, or at least not here. I have one, but I, I always tend to forget it every time. I'm like, screw it. I'm all the way out here and I actually want to uh, shoot this video for y'all so you guys can uh, get some quick tips and learn some new stuff about the Alaskan winter and how to survive it. And I thought today would be a perfect day because it's actually not that great of a day. It's a perfect perfect Alaskan day. And uh, you guys can see it's heavy fog out here. It is actually pretty warm, but everything is extremely wet. So there's always new things to learn. And that's exactly what we're gonna be doing today. Anyways, guys, please do not forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe so you can see more awesome Alaskan content like this. <clears throat> okay guys, hopefully this camera doesn't fall and hopefully you guys can get a little bit better idea of my surroundings. I'm trying to make the best of this video. I don't have a whole lot of time actually to do this, record this video, but I'm going to be doing a few short kind of lessons that I learned and how to survive in Alaskan winter. Now, we all know that Alaskan winters are really a mixed bag. They can be warm, but they're always, always wild. What I mean by that is, like you can see today we woke up and there's dense ice fog everywhere. And this makes obviously navigation very, extremely difficult. So actually the first part of this that kind of ties into navigation is what I'm gonna be talking about now. And that is that this one, a lot of people don't actually know, but I'm gonna be talking about the best time to travel in the Alaskan winter. Now, it's actually similar to the desert that most of you guys know that if you're smart in the Alaska or not like any desert, you don't travel by day. And the same is true here in Alaska for the most part. One, because we don't have much of a day in the winter. And secondly, because actually, believe it or not, our daytime is actually generally one of the colder times. So basically to explain the coldest times in Alaska as far as a day goes is that the absolute coldest times are gonna be between six in the morning, around five to six in the morning, to around 12 in the afternoon. Then after 12 to about three, it's moderate. But once the sun sets, it actually begins to get significantly warmer. So the best times to travel are during the time frame of about three o'clock to about 9 to 12 in the morning. These are the best times because it's actually the warmest time uh, of the day. Now I know that sounds kind of counterintuitive, You're like why would you travel by night or something like that? But there's two primary reasons. One, it's the warmest time, so you generally want to move when it's warmest and hunker down when it's the coldest. At least in my philosophy, that's what I like to do. And another thing is that if people are trying to find you, they're going to be looking by day. So if you're moving, if you're actively trekking across the land, they're gonna have a harder time finding you because you're moving as opposed to staying stationary when most people are going to be looking for you. So it's better in most times to actually stay stationary during the day because one, it's coldest, and two, that's when people are going to be looking for you the most. And secondly, you wanna move by night because of the warmth primarily and the fact that people aren't really going to be looking Looking for you during the night unless they know you're close. So <clears throat> the next survival tip goes into actually early winter. I also want to note too that generally um, <clears throat> by the day, so when you wake up and it's kind of like this, you guys can see it's very foggy, during the night it tends to, so it's the warmest at night, but at night it's going through a transitional time when things are beginning to cool down. So fogs like this generally dissipate toward the light, later hours of the day. So it's also better to move during the later hours of the day and night uh, because this fog dissipates. So the next thing is, secondly, and this is more toward early winter, <clears throat> is avoiding 
any waterways. Um, <clears throat> here in Alaska, our waterways do, most of them, freeze up thick enough where you can walk across them. But during early winter, you want to be extremely mindful, and this is generally in the months of uh, October, November, and early December. You want to be very mindful not to walk or take things like snow machines across any waterways. And that's because generally our lakes, streams, ponds, whatever, have not frozen up enough. Uh, and so you don't want to launch yourself into a survival situation. Or if you're already in a survival situation, you don't want to complicate things significantly more by getting yourself wet when it's freezing out. So guys, I'm trying new things. This is legitimately a bale of hay right here that I stuck my phone in. So apologies if it's a little bit off or askew. But um, like I was gonna say, as I try and find a nice place to sink down here, um, like I was gonna say, uh, the next part is wind. And a lot of people, when they come to visit Alaska in the summer and spring, fall, they don't really understand how windy Alaska actually is. But without the leaf coverage of the trees around us, it actually is an extremely windy place. So unfortunately today, uh, Alaska is making a liar out of me, but trust me, I do know Alaska. I've been here for a while. Generally, it is extremely windy. Today is a little bit of an off day and it's actually not windy at all right now, which is nice. I definitely enjoy filming when there's no wind, but generally Alaska is actually a very windy place. So as a general rule, you want to try and stay out of large fields like this one I'm at today. The primary reason I film in a field like this is primarily for the lighting because there's so much ambient lighting. Even when it's foggy, there's so much ambient lighting that um, I can film a lot better. and My videos can be a lot more bright for you guys. So I do this primarily for the videos, but when I'm actually in the woods and bushcrafting, I tend to be, there's a forest over here to the right. You guys can't really see it, unless you're familiar with this field. I've taken you guys here multiple times. But unless you're familiar with the field, there's a forest off to the right over here or to you guys' left. And so uh, that's where I generally go to bushcraft. But for filming, I tend to be out in this field. So anyways, uh, like I was going to say, it's very windy and you generally want to avoid fields like this. And if you have to hunker down in a field like this, the one advantage to uh, winters in Alaska is Alaska does give you something for hunkering down in a field like that. And this is all this stuff below me. You can make shelters, especially now because you guys can see how compactable this snow is. You guys can see there, this snow is very compactable right now. So uh, you could make pretty easily a snow shelter with actually little to no tools at all. You could basically come out here, burrow into the snow and make a small little one man shelter. If you absolutely had to hunker down in a time like this and you had no other option, if you have, if you're dressed appropriately, you can hunker down in the snow quite well actually. So the next part, and this really shouldn't surprise anyone, the primary reason I'm not wearing more layers is because it's over, it's 33 above right now, so it's very warm. But generally when you're out here in the Alaskan wilderness, you want to prepare yourself by layering appropriately. And one of the best ways to do that is <clears throat> to really make sure all your gear overlaps. If you've noticed one consistent trend, if you guys watch more of my YouTube winter videos, especially when I'm wearing snow pants, everything overlaps itself going downward. And the primary thing or reason I do this is because hot air rises. So a lot of people will tuck their stuff in, they're inexperienced upward, but that allows air to leak out of say, like if I had this tucked into my pants or snow pants, it would allow hot air to leak upward and same with this stuff. About the only exception to this rule is generally my face mask, but that's just a little bit of a different thing. <laughs> and the face mask is a little bit weird because it's actually catching the hot air from your breath and diverting it downward. So it's a little bit different, <clears throat> but generally everything that I layer except the face mask is all facing downward to keep hot air continually circulating into my body or into the core zone and just all throughout my body. You guys can even notice another common mistake a lot of people make is unless you do it specially how I do it, <coughs> um, you don't want to overlap things like mucklucks facing up, but I do it a little bit differently. And I might do some roll-in footage of how I put on mucklucks with snow pants to show you guys how exactly I keep my layering system to work very well for snowy conditions. And another thing you do want to do is layer smart, and that is that you want to keep your layers strippable because out here, especially when it's this warm out like today, 
<clears throat> if you do have quite a few layers on, like even this is too much for active, like mushing through the snow here, uh, you want to make sure that your layers are strippable. So you guys can see here, I can easily take this layer off. Other than this little paracord piece here, there's really nothing holding it back. So you guys can see, I can easily open up and cool down. And this is one of the fastest ways to cool down is just to open up your coat or even take it off. I'm not gonna necessarily take mine off here because I have this knife kind of strapped over here and I'm not particularly cold or yet warm. So <clears throat> I'm not necessarily gonna take this off. But you guys can see how easily strippable my winter gear is. And this is a very important strategy for winter time because you want to make sure that you don't get too warm because getting too warm can be just every bit as dangerous as not being warm enough because when you begin to sweat you begin to set sweat soak all of your stuff and it begins to get really wet really clammy and even if because like or and even if you aren't overnighting in that wet clammy gear like i've been on day outings back when i was inexperienced and my uh gear got like wet and clammy and it's not that fun to just trudge through all this snow with a wet gear that's kind of nasty and clammy feeling it sucks so you definitely want to make sure that your stuff is strippable and that you can take this off carry it in a hand or just set it on your backpack and just make sure that it's out of the way So guys, I'm kind of running out of uh, video time for this camera, my phone camera. It doesn't have a whole lot of video length on it. So I'm going to wrap this video up. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed taking a look at some of my wintertime survival tips. And hopefully this will help you guys be better at staying alive and being safe in the Alaskan winter. And anyways, guys, there's not too much to show with the environment because the one advantage to winter is most of the environmental problems such as water and different marshlands are frozen and covered with snow. So there's not too many environmental things aside from the early, the early winter time when you can fall through ice and stuff like that. You just be careful of that. But there's really not that much environmental aside from the inclements wanting to attack you. So anyways, guys, that's all for now. Hopefully you've enjoyed this little bit of a different video mix up with the camera. And that's all I have to say. God bless, and I'm out.